Good evening, church. It's great to see everyone this evening. It's great to be here. I'm thankful for the opportunity to get up and to speak this evening. What a world we live in. That's all I can say. Is what a world we live in. It never ceases to amaze me what has happened from day to day when you turn on the news. You hear of so much death, destruction, that after a while you become desensitized to it. It's like it never happened. We live in a world where you never seem to hear good things anymore. And there are a few words that I've noticed that you never hear any longer. It seems as though people have taken these words and in a sense thrown them away. They've thrown them away. There are words like love. They've thrown them away. Peace. They've thrown it. It's gone. We don't have peace any longer. Compassion. We have no compassion in our world any longer. They've thrown it away. Kindness. There's no kindness anymore. You don't see it. So they've taken it and they've thrown it away. One of the more important ones, faithfulness. They've taken faithfulness and they've thrown it away. We don't have it anymore. Humbleness. There's not very many humble people out there anymore. They've thrown it away. Trustworthiness. They've thrown trust in they, There's no trust. Nobody can trust anybody anymore. They've thrown trustworthiness away. And lastly, but probably most importantly, godliness. There's no godly people in this world anymore. You don't, you don't see it. You can't walk up to somebody on the street and expect to find a godly person anymore. They've thrown it away. But there are words that have taken, that have, even though these words have been taken out of our vocabularies, there are words that have been put back in. And they've, <clears throat> you know, I'd venture to say that one out of maybe 30 to 40, probably the ratio is probably higher than that, news stories that you hear every day or read every day, they don't have any of these words in them anymore. One maybe out of several might be a good news story. Instead, they've taken words like this, like murder. They've taken words like idolatry, sexual immorality, homosexuality, hatred, drunkenness, greed, boastfulness, pride, envy, and jealousy. These are the words that's in the world's vocabulary today. They're the words that we most often hear about. I'd like to take a few moments and point out just a few words that we have that you hear from day to day. And I'd like to walk through the scriptures with you and see what God has to say about these words that the world seems to hold to high esteem. First, probably big one right now, if you will turn on the news, is homosexuality. Homosexuality has quickly become one of the world's most talked about subjects. Statistics show that as of 2011, there are approximately 9 million people in America alone, or 3.8%, who claim to be homosexual or of that persuasion. You constantly hear about our government wanting to make this sin an accepted practice. They're trying to bring it in and bring it into our lives like nothing ever happened. So let's look and see what the scripture has to say about it. Big one, verse, Genesis chapter 2, verses 23 and 24. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. 
He shall be called woman, and she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall be called one flesh. It doesn't say he shall be joined to his husband or she shall be joined to her wife. It says he shall be joined to his wife, and they will become one flesh. Christ reiterates this command in the New Testament as well. Matthew 19, verses 4 through 6. Say, and he answered and said, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Mother, and, and, and said, For this reason man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. So not only was it in the creation, but Christ reiterated it in Matthew in the Gospels. Let's look at idolatry. There's so many things in today's world that people seem to be so caught up in. The physical things, money, property, possessions, everything, we've, everything we own. That's, that's, what we, that's what we idolize these days. We idolize celebrities, sports figures. We idolize all of these people and all of these things and it's all for nothing. There, anything that you, can, that you can put into the column of idolatry is never going to do anything for you. It's not going to make you any happier. It's not going to, make you, it's not going to help you get to heaven, I can tell you that. It's not going to do it. And so, but people think that, you know what, if I have money, if I have the finest things, the finest cars, the best, the best home, if I have all of these things, then I'll be happy. I don't need anything else. I'll be happy. It's not true. If we look back to the, to the Old Testament, Leviticus 19 in, chapter, in, in verse 4 says, Do not turn to idols or make for yourself molten gods. I am the Lord your God. So that's God speaking. He says, I'm the Lord. Not anything else. You can't make anything else to replace me. Leviticus 26 and 1 says, You shall not make, any, make for yourselves idols, nor shall you set up for yourselves an image or a sacred pillar, nor shall you place a figured stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. So anything that you can think of that's a physical position that you can walk up to and touch, that's not an idol. That's not what we should be worshiping. That's not what we should be following and lusting after. David also talks about idols in the Psalms. If you'll turn to Psalm 31. I'm going to read verses, or verse 6 says, I hate those who regard vain idols, but I trust in the Lord. Psalm 115. I'll read, ver I'll read the verses 1 through 9. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory because of your loving kindness, because of your truth. Why should the nation say, where now is their God? But our God is in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold. Their work of man's hands. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. Have eyes, but cannot see. They have ears, but cannot hear. They have noses, but cannot smell. And they have hands, but they cannot feel. They have feet, but they cannot walk. They cannot make a sound with their throat. Those who make them will become like them. Everyone who trusts in them. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. It's plain and simple right there. Anything... That it goes from, from these days, from before, all the way up to now. Anything that you could make, it's not real. But God is real. And He's the one that we should be trusting in. If we look in Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 11, it says, So as I live, declares the Lord God, 
Surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with your detestable idols and with all of your abominations. Therefore I will also withdraw, and my eye will have no pity, and I will not spare. So those people who trust in idols, who put their trust in physical things, God's not going to spare those people. He's not going to do it. First John in the New Testament, chapter 5 and 20, 21, says, Little children, guard yourselves from idols. So even all the way through the ages into the New, New Testament century, and the New Testament Christians, they told them, guard yourself. Don't do it. As a whole, people have seen to turn away from God and focus on their idols. Although the idols of today are not quite like the idols of biblical times, God still does reject them and those who turn to them. We need to remember to keep our focus on God and not of things of, on things of this world. Another important one, sexual immorality. You can't seem to turn on the TV, the computer, read a newspaper or a magazine, something. You can't without seeing some type of sexual promiscuity. You can even, sexual, sexual immorality seems to have taken over all forms of media. I know that we live in an age of Facebook and Twitter and all these different social media sites, but it's even invaded those too. I can't, I can't get on a computer and get onto my Facebook website without some ad being over on the side for something that is immoral. Even when you think you're watching a family program on TV or you're looking at something family related online, when you least expect it, something pops up and it has some sort of sexual promiscuity in it. You can't get on the computer anymore. You can't watch TV. You can't watch TV in your own home. I can tell you, I don't have cable in my home. I have local stations, whatever my antenna will pick up. But even that, there's always going to be something. There's TV shows out there that promote it. There's celebrities and there's people out there who promote it. That is their livelihood, is sexual immorality. That's what they do for a living. And we can't, we can't seem to escape it. If we look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, it says, Finally, brethren, we request and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that, you ha that as you receive from us instruction as you ought as to how you ought to walk and please God, just as you actually do walk, that you ex excel still more. For you know what, command what commandments we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that is, that you abstain from sexual immorality. That's a verse that I think should be plastered everywhere. It should be everywhere. Is that you abstain from sexual immorality. And I bet you it would get a lot of people thinking about what they're doing. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 15 through 20, it says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take away the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? May it never be. Or do you not know that the one who joins himself to a prostitute is one body with her? For he says, the two shall become one flesh. But the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee immorality. Every other sin that man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not on your own? For you have been bought with a price, therefore, therefore glorify God in your body. Now these are just a few of the hot topics that are out there today. I could go on and on and, and find scripture after scripture on every, every word up here. And we know that. But these are a few of the, the, the hot topics that you see most commonly in the media that are affecting our government. That are that inevitably affect our daily lives and infect our daily lives. And 
we should be ever mindful that these things are out there and ever watchful that we don't let these things become part of our lives. And even more importantly, a part of our children's lives. It's running rampant. Children have so much more access to things these days. You can go online, watch TV, every, anything you do, you can access any of these, any of these things that you can, that are out there. Everything you see, listen to, and read can contain, in the, can contain, and in the future will contain even more sinful things that we have to be on the lookout for. There's one good thing that we can do with all of these words that the world has adopted. I have all these words right here. There's a whole, whole stack of them. And one thing we can do, what the, excuse me. There's one good thing that we can do with all these words. We can do what the world has done to these words right here, and we can discard them. Take these, take these others out, and we can discard them. Get rid of them. Take them out of our lives. If we, when we decide to discard them, we can add one more important word to our vocabularies, and that's the word Christian. And as you see, it's in red, because when we become a Christian, we put on the blood of Christ. And if you don't know, that's our baptistry. It's kind of hard to see in that picture. But that is our actual baptistry up there. I took it just the other night. When we choose to accept Christ and put him on in baptism, we are no longer part of this world, but we become a part of the heavenly world. So tonight, if you're ready to remove these words from your life and add the word Christian to your life, or if you have added the word Christian and have put it away in your mind, we can help you to either put on Christ or to come back and make him the most important part of your world. We ask that you come tonight as we stand and as we sing.